is I'm going to make this brief because I have tried to record this many times and things keep happening. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep the enthusiasm despite the fact that I don't really have any anymore. Um, this is the last of my boutique label and exploitation shelf. Um, next time I'm going to get into my monster movies. Um, uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun, but I'm going to dive into this real quick. First up is the Roger Corman cult classic triple feature sci-fi classics collection with Attack of the Crab Monsters, War of the Satellites, and Not of This Earth. Uh, my favorite of the bunch is uh, Attack of the Crab Monsters. I have a thing for the monsters in these early Roger Corman movies with their big toothy grins and their googly eyes. Many of them were designed by Paul Blaisdell, and... Um, whether it's Viola, the uh, monster from It Conquered the World, or Marty the Mutant from The Day the World Ended, or even um, The Creature from the Haunted Sea, which has a uh, kind of cookie monster look to him, there's something about these monsters, as cheap as they are, they have a charm and a personality that I really like. These early Roger Corman movies don't get a lot of respect. Um, they're not as good as, you know, later on when he would team up with uh, Vincent Price and Richard Matheson and Charles Beaumont on films like The Intruder and the Edgar Allan Poe films. They're not on that level, and they're not as exploitative and um, fun as the uh, New World pictures of the 70s and 80s, but they are fun in their own right, and there's a lot, they're a lot more socially conscious than people give them credit for. You have films like The Wasp Woman, which is all about ageism in the workplace, and a woman um, struggling with her body image and her place in society as she gets older, uh, which is something we're still dealing with today was especially relevant in the 1950s. And then you have the movie uh, Bucket of Blood, which I'll go ahead and talk about here because it's public domain. And I have it in a bunch of sets that I'm not going to pull out. But uh, that one has Dick Miller in it. And it's kind of the satire on the whole beatnik, uh, pretentious art scene of the time. And um, that one is just a lot of fun. And, and if I had to recommend one from that time period, it would be a Bucket of Blood because it's just a really great social commentary and it's, it's a lot of fun. But I love Roger Corman a lot. Uh, he has a series with his wife, Julie Corman, on uh, the history of his films. And uh, even though he's almost a century old, he's in his 90s, um, he's still sharp as ever and just as warm and friendly and knowledgeable. And I can listen to him forever. So if you go on Shout TV, that's a really good series to watch. Um, his commentaries are always great. I love Roger Corman, but um, these are some films that he produced when he was with World, uh, the New World Pictures era in the 70s. Uh, Women in Cages collection. Um, Women in Cages is the one I don't watch too often, but the two Jack Hill films, The Big Dollhouse and especially The Big Bird Cage, are ones that I watch pretty often. I was kind of spoiled by these. These were my first women in prison films, and... Um, the genre never really gets better from here. They get more mean-spirited and a lot sleazier, but um, I prefer these because um, they're kind of empowering. The characters are likable. They're not mean-spirited. You don't feel dirty after watching them. Uh, the Big Bird Cage is my favorite of the bunch, though, because it stars Anitra Ford, who you re may remember from Invasion of the Bee Girls and Messiah of Evil. Uh, she is very lovely, a uh, lovely, striking woman. Um, and just brimming with personality. I, I love her so much. But uh, unfortunately, she gets kind of lost in the mix about halfway through um, and becomes another face in the cast once uh, Pam Greer and Sid Haig show up. But they're wonderful, so no complaints there. And you could feel that uh, Sid Haig and Pam Greer really were friends in real life because um, there's a, they have a really great chemistry together. And um, one of the highlights of Jack Hill's films is that Sid Haig is in almost all of them and Pam Greer is in a good chunk of them. And um, whenever they're on screen together, they're fantastic. Uh, this is my favorite Sid Haig performance. Uh, his comedic timing is perfect, and he instills a bit of humanity to the character that he didn't didn't have to do, but it's much appreciated. Um, great movie. <coughs> uh, next up is Spider Baby. I'm not a huge fan of this cover, but I love this movie. This is a Halloween staple of mine. Um, I watch it every year. Uh, the soundtrack is by Lon Chaney Jr. He sings the theme song, and that's another kooky Halloween favorite of mine. This movie feels like the love child of uh, the old Dark House and the Adams Family. 
it has that kind of kookiness to it. Um, it stars Lon Chaney Jr., and uh, this is a great latter-day performance for Chaney because after House of Dracula and the Inner Sanctum movies and the Universal Monster movies wound down, um, Chaney kind of spiraled into alcoholism, and his star fell a bit, and um, he would end up doing great performances in smaller film. I mean, um, smaller performances in films like um, High Noon, and he's great in that, but... Um, the genre that he had worked in had kind of dried up, and um, he wasn't getting the type of roles that he got before. Uh, horror was kind of dead in the 1950s and had been replaced by science fiction. Uh, he gives a really great drunken performance in um, The Alligator People, but for the most part, uh, his films of this era are pretty um, unspectacular. Um, but this film, he gives a really sensitive, tender performance, and it's kind of a reminder of how great Chaney was uh, during his heyday in films like Of Mice and Men and The Wolfman. Uh, he was sober during the production of this, but um, great later day performance if you just want to remember how great Lon Chaney Jr. could be. I always thought he was an underrated performer um, who doesn't get it, the credit that he deserves and always lived in the shadow of his father, but... Um, I really like this. And then Sid Haig is in it, of course, because it's Jack Hill, and he's a lot of fun. And um, really great cast and um, really kooky movie. I just wanted to spotlight Chaney for a bit, um, who I'll talk about more when I talk about my monster movies. Next up is uh, Pam Greer and Coffee. Um, I love Pam Greer. She's probably the most badass woman who's ever existed in cinema, uh, just oozing with charisma and personality. Um, Every moment she's on screen is like dynamite. Um, but uh, I prefer Foxy Brown. Is my favorite of the two. The dialogue in these movies is just pitch perfect. And the way she delivers it is just incredible. But two iconic characters from Pam Greer. And these were the two that really, really put her on the map. But I could talk about her forever. So uh, Next up is Shaft. Um, I really love Richard Roundtree. Uh, whenever he appears in things, I'm usually happy. The um, thing about these movies is uh, they're kind of a time capsule. And they've tried to bring Shaft back so uh, two times now. And then they did Superfly for some reason. And I, I just don't get it. These um, 70s um, black exploitation movies, um, they're time capsule films. And there's so much of their time that if you try to modernize them, it just doesn't work. It's like lightning in a bottle. Um, something in the zeitgeist when these movies were made um you can't replicate that uh, and i really wish they would stop uh trying because it's just these movies are really special but um this movie has that great um theme song everybody loves and um it's a really fun movie next up is my guy rudy ray moore uh i got to set at walmart for uh 20 bucks uh, I know that uh, Vinegar Syndrome put this out on Blu-ray, but I'm not going to argue with a big brick of uh, Dolomite for 20 bucks. Uh, Rudy Ray Moore is a hero of mine. I, I love him very much. Um, I'm a sucker for anybody with a really good yell, and Rudy Ray Moore's yell never ceases to make me laugh. Um, He's not a great actor, he pretty much plays himself, but he's a personality, and he just brings so much to this these characters that he plays, which he played characters other than Dolomite, but they're all essentially the same character. Um, but these come with uh, it's a bunch of documentaries and live shows, uh, but the films are Disco Godfather, Petey Wheatstraw, The Human Tornado, and Dolomite. Uh, my favorite of the bunch is Petey Wheatstraw. I feel like that's the movie where he's just firing on all cylinders. And the Rudy Ray Moore um, kind of formula had been established by that point. They were a well-oiled machine by that point. But the other thing I like about Rudy, Ray's, uh, Rudy Ray Moore's uh, films is there's a sense of corrupt camaraderie behind the scenes. And you can really feel it uh, where it's you can tell that it's just Rudy Ray Moore and his friends and people he knows. Uh, getting together and putting on a show. Uh, they don't have a lot of money, but man, they're going to entertain you. And there's just wild stuff, and they're never afraid to experiment. And there's something really inspiring about that. Um, every time I watch one of Rudy Ray Moore's, especially um, 
uh, Dolomite um, and um, Petey Wheatstraw. They just uh, inspire me to want to make movies. Um, it's that, that sense of um, camaraderie there where it's just a bunch of people getting together and making it happen. Um, but I, I love him. And I really like that film that uh, Eddie Murphy did about him. Um, anyway, going into the Soul Cinema collections, Cotton Comes to Harlem, which was directed by the uh, great Ossie Davis, who's an actor that I really admire. Um, and then Hell Up in Harlem, which was um, a Larry Cohen film. Uh, it was kind of his follow-up to Black Caesar, which I do prefer over Hell Up in Harlem. Um, but I do like Hell Up in Harlem. Fred Williamson was always great. Um, he's right up there with Pam Greer, where um, they're just these icons, you know, and everything they're in, you're guaranteed a good time. But I agree with Fred Williamson when he said he didn't do black exploitation movies because when I think of black exploitation, I do think more of like the Xenon films, uh, like Welcome Home, Brother Charles, or the Dolo you know Dolomite. But um, the films with Fred Williamson and even like Pam Greer, um, they're just damn good movies. Um, they're not really exploitation movies. I know they could be lumped in with that, but um, like Hell Up in Harlem and especially uh, Black Caesar is just an awesome drama. Um, these were really good movies. Um, and they're just, like I said, they're a time capsule. Uh, they have a flavor to them that just can't be replicated. But uh, Fred Williamson is just oozing with charisma. He's just one of the most charismatic people ever on screen. Uh, speaking of which, uh, William Marshall is another actor who is just very charismatic and likable. Um, Blackilla and Scream Blackilla Scream are really great. Um, I grew up with William Marshall, of course. I saw him first in uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse, where he played the king of cartoons. And um, then finding out he was also Blackula, I just loved him even more. But um, he's a great on-screen on presence. And uh, I've often said that Blackula is the greatest attempt to modernize Dracula and bring Dracula into the modern world. Whereas uh, Christopher Lee, you know, in the Hammer films, they tried to do it too at the same time. But um, Christopher Lee would look really ridiculous in the cape and get up if he were to mingle in modern society. Which is why in those films they keep him relegated to the uh, cemetery and in the shadows. Because you can't just have Dracula walking around. Whereas William Marshall in this film, he fits right in. Uh, he still has the regalness of a... Um, guy who's been around for hundreds of years but uh and you buy that aspect of him but you also buy him as a man who can um even though he is from out of time he can mingle with society and fit right in and charm people and no one really bats an eye at him whereas if christopher lee you know um walks down the street you know people are going to look at him you know weirdly um not the case with uh, william marshall um so I just think this is the greatest attempt ever to bring ancient Dracula-type character into modern times. Um, and then the sequel, Scream, Blackula Scream, I'm a big fan of too. I actually maybe like it a little bit more. It has Pam Greer in it, but I'm also a sucker for movies with voodoo in them. Um, I love that Louisiana culture and the uh, West African influence of, and... Um, Voodoo is just really interesting in general. Um, there's another one called Sugar Hill, uh, which is made at this time period. It also has voodoo in it. Uh, the James Bond movie, Live and Let Die. Um, you know, I just, I'm a, such a sucker for that. I eat it up. But um, I like Scream, Black Hill Scream just as much. I find it's kind of an underappreciated sequel. Um, it's fun, <laughs> but I love that stuff. Um, next up. Bargain Bin Collections. This features Blood Diner, uh, Blood Diner which was um, Jackie Kong's attempt to uh, kind of satirize and send up uh, the films of Herschel Gordon Lewis. Um, it was originally meant to be a sequel to Blood Feast. This one is a lot of fun. I really, really like this movie. It's so over the top and uh, wacky. Um, next up is Parents, which is... Um, a dark comedy that I didn't like at first, but has really grown on me once I kind of understood what it is. 
Nerf Girls Are Easy is not a movie I'm very fond of, though I do really like Julie Brown. It's always nice seeing her. Sundown is kind of a okay, fun Bruce Campbell movie. Uh, Fido is really great. I'm really fond of the actor uh, Dylan Baker. Uh, he shows up in things like um, Trick or Treat, and he played Dr. Connors in the Spider-Man movies, and um, he's in a really disturbing movie called Happiness, but um, I really like his dry uh, delivery. <laughs> There's something about Dylan Baker. I just, anything he's in, I, I always enjoy his performances. But um, Billy Connolly is great in this as a zombie. It's a fun send-up to things like Lassie but with a zombie. It's a cute movie. And I haven't seen Boy Eats Girl because I don't really like like horror comedies with teenagers from this time period. Um, next up is another one. Um, I got it for Waxwork. I love this movie. I'm just going to say uh, Zach Galligan may be the most likable person ever to appear on film. He's in Gremlins. There's something uh, very sweet and doe-eyed about him that... Uh, I just really like and it's funny because even today he looks he looks the same the man hasn't aged at all but um also stars david warner who i grew up with as uh, ray shall ghoul on batman the animated series so i knew his voice before i knew him but um great actor and patrick mcgee is in it dana ashbrook is in it uh so you have two actors from twin peaks in this um and just a a huge stable of monsters. Every monster you can think of is in this movie. Um, I like the sequel a lot too. I haven't seen uh, 976 Evil 2 uh, because I haven't seen the first one. Uh, Ghoulies 3 I'm not too fond of. The Unholy I'm not too fond of. Um, Chud 2, Bud the Chud, here's a hot take. I actually like Bud the Chud more than the first one. Um, I always found the original Chud kind of boring, even though I like the monsters, the creatures themselves are really cool, but uh, Chud 2 has a really fun performance by um, Garrett Graham, who played Beef in uh, The Phantom of the Paradise, and he's wildly entertaining, and it feels more like a Return of the Living Dead movie, uh, but it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, Chopping Mall is a great early Jim Wynorski film, and I'm always sad for Jim Wynorski because in his heyday, when he did films like this and um, uh, Return of the Swamp Thing, he just made a lot of really fun movies. And then when the direct-to-video market um, came into play, and these movies started getting stopped getting theatrical releases, um, he just fell into uh, doing softcore movies and became very bitter and. Um, it's a shame. Uh, Slaughter High is really great. This movie has a wet, hot American summer movie. Um, wet, hot American summer feel to it because all the actors in this are much older than the teenagers they're playing, including the lovely Carolyn Monroe, who uh, was like 35 at the time, uh, playing a teenager. <laughs> but this is a really fun slasher movie. Um, kind of your standard slasher but um i enjoy it and class of 1999 is a sequel to um class of 1984 i still haven't watched this but i've heard really good things about it um, next up is the toxic avenger this is one of the quintessential 80s monster movies everybody's seen it so i'm not really going to talk about it um citizen toxie as well a lot of fun these are the only two toxic avenger movies that i have because honestly they're the only two i like i don't really like toxie two and three all that much but they're really great um especially the first one uh terror firmer feels like it's um coming directly from lloyd <laughs> lloyd kaufman's uh mouth this movie is very cynical and it's very critical of modern hollywood which I don't know, in a world that's completely dominated by uh, big, soulless uh, blockbusters and superhero movies, uh, this movie seems really apt um, about how the little guy has just been destroyed. And uh, there's a character in this movie uh, named Casey who I always think of this line when I think of um, people who only watch mainstream movies and never like go to watch anything else. There's a quote in this movie where Casey says... People want big budget movies. This is why we go to the movies. Um, 
it's just it's so perfect but uh it's a very cynical movie um but it's also really gross and hilarious and you feel like you really get to know it uh get to know lloyd kaufman when you watch this movie and there are a lot of his uh personal experiences worked into it um too but this is my favorite trauma movie my favorite of Lloyd Kaufman's movies, uh, Tromeo and Juliet. It was written by James Gunn. Uh, James Gunn is actually one of the voices in Hollywood that I am really enjoying. I've liked most of his films. Um, I thought of the Marvel movies, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2, had a little bit more personality and individuality than you usually see in those movies. Um, he's really great, and I'm always going to support his work. Um, but... Tromeo and Juliet, it's a lot of fun. It has his brother Sean in it. Uh, Will Keenan, it was in Terra Firmer, he's in it. Uh, Debbie Rashawn, really great cast, really good soundtrack. But um, this movie just makes me laugh. Um, I quote it a lot with my friends. Um, next up is Poultry Geist, Night of the Chicken Dead, which I have signed by Lloyd Kaufman. Um, Toxie loves Ron, love Lloyd Kaufman. Uh, this is one when I met Lloyd at a convention. My friend um, was actually working the trauma booth. He was playing the Toxic Avenger and he was going around dressed as Toxie and uh, he complained about it, which I don't know why. I, I told him, well, one, it was probably one of the masks from Toxic Avenger 2 or 3. It was that same rat shit infested mask that um, probably just dwelled in um, the trauma basement for 30 years. Um, but he was wearing that, and he was walking around as Toxie, and he was complaining. And I'm like, you get to play Toxie for Lloyd Kaufman. Not many people get to do that. But he introduced me to Lloyd, and um, I was just a gushing fanboy. And I, I had just watched this movie, and I'd been a fan of um, Lloyd Kaufman for years. And I, I love him, and I love his movies, and I love his books on film they're really great and uh but here he was and i just couldn't stop gushing and um lloyd kaufman has a um a persona that he puts on his uh, uncle lloyd personality where he's just on comedically and he's really funny and he has a megaphone and he's trying to get people to go to the trauma booth and he's just larger than life and just consistently hilarious um he actually broke character uh he put up with me gushing and broke character and uh for a moment and uh, gave me a really kind of warm, sincere um, thank you. Like, he really appreciated what I had to say, and uh, he gave me a hug. So I'll always remember that, the day that uh, Lloyd Kaufman gave me a hug, and uh, that, that meant a lot to me. <laughs> um, it's always nice when you meet your heroes and they turn out to be um, really cool. But if you're ever at a convention and you see the trauma booth um, and Lloyd is there, definitely go. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman is hilarious, and he's he's really, really nice. Like, um, really great guy to meet. Um, next up is Cannibal the Musical, Trey Parker and uh, Matt Stone. What more to say about this film? I get uh, Let's Build a Snowman stuck in my head on a weekly basis. Uh, Troll 1 and 2. Um, I'm going to be real. This is a hot take. Uh, I'm a big fan of the first Troll. I like John Carl Beekler. He's another one of those directors who um, just always seemed really warm and friendly, and his, his stories are amazing if you listen to his commentaries. just seemed like the greatest guy ever. Um, and um, I always felt bad for him because he did the seventh Friday the 13th movie, and... Um, the MPAA ruined his movie. That movie, just, they butchered it, and I feel so bad for him. But uh, Troll is a fun little movie. The problem with this movie is um, it's not a horror movie. This is a family uh, fantasy movie, and if you go in expecting that, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the Troll effects are really great. I really wish um, I could have met John Carl Beekler to find out how he did this, because... Um, it's kind of an early example of like uh, animatronic makeup hybrid, and um, the troll is really cool. And he's played by uh, Fond, uh, um, Fond. He's played by uh, Phil Fonda Caro, who is a character actor uh, who also plays the character of Malcolm in this movie. But um, great character actor who I grew up watching. He was on uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. He played uh, Roland, who is this little. Um, 
elf guy who just pestered her all the time and wanted um, wanted to marry her. And uh, he's in the Tales from the Crypt movies. He's in um, Bordello of Blood. He shows up in a lot of things, but I've always really, really liked him. And um, the troll is an awesome monster. But uh, this is a really fun, fun movie. Um, that I don't think deserves to be crapped on as much as it does. And it also has um, Michael Moriarty in it, so I like it. Uh, Troll 2 we're not going to talk about because there's a whole documentary devoted to it. Um, really fun, bad movie directed by Claudio Vergasso. Probably his best movie. Uh, Meet the Feebles. It was a really cool early puppet movie that's really gross. Um, Peter Jackson. I like it. Kentucky Fried Movie, early John Landis. Um, I'm a big fan of some of the sketches for this. If I had any um, complaint about this movie, it's that I do think that the Fistful of Yen uh, parody of um, Enter the Dragon does run a little bit long. Um, I like this movie a lot, but I do prefer um, Amazon Women on the Moon, which was kind of a follow-up to this. Um, I prefer that one over this one. But um, Kentucky Fried Movie is fun. Next up is a pack of uh, public domain kung fu films. Uh, I've only seen one of these, and I was flabbergasted that it used the soundtrack to um, uh, Exorcist 2 by Ennio Morricone. Lovely score, but uh, I think it's funny that they used it in this. Um, I need to watch more of these. Uh, Ricky O, which is the ultimate fun martial arts uh, splatter film. Uh, this is a really good one to order pizza, get some alcohol, and have a bunch of friends and laugh your ass off. This is a wild, wild movie. And uh, you guys have all seen it, I'm sure. Um, going fast because I'm afraid my battery is going to die. Uh, Deliverance, just randomly. Classic film. The Warriors, just randomly. Walter Hill, uh, really awesome movie. The Fist of Death Collection, which includes the Street Fighter movies, which um, I do need to upgrade on Blu-ray because I really like them. Um, but it also includes a bunch of the Bruce exploitation movies that were made after Bruce Lee died with uh, guys like Bruce Lai. Um, I'm not a fan of these movies. Um, I, if I want to watch a uh, Bruce Lee movie, I'll watch a Bruce Lee movie. But I, I just find these movies just really insulting. Like... Um, exploiting a man's death to the point where some of them actually show like his body in a casket you know type thing and that that's just just in bad taste i'm not not a fan of these um but i am a fan of these girls guns and g-strings collection um these are andy sadaris films this is all of his films um the one to really watch like if you've never seen any of his films is a uh, hard ticket to hawaii um it's just a really fun, hilarious 80s action movie with some great set pieces. But these were staples of the mom and pop video stores when I was growing up. I used to rent uh, Return to Savage Beach and um, Day of the Warrior quite a bit. They're, ri they're ridiculous movies, um, but I'm a big fan of them. Um, they kind of run together if you watch them all at once, which I've done before. And uh, I wouldn't mind revisiting these, but... Uh, Andy Sedaris is fun. Uh, next up is the Bombshells collection. I've only watched two of these. Uh, chain Gang Women, which is not what I thought it would be. It's actually about some men that are on a chain gang who run away. Um, and then also Galaxina, which uh, is a really bad Star Wars parody. And I don't like Star Wars very much to begin with. Um, it's really only notable for... Um, Starring Dorothy Stratton, who is the Playboy Playmate, who was uh, violently murdered by her disturbing, crazy boyfriend. Um, it was made into the film Star 80, which is a great movie if you guys want to check that out. Uh, but Galaxina, I've seen that. But I wouldn't mind watching some of these other ones. Just These public domain sets, I just buy them and um, I forget about them sometimes. Also... Um, Ray Bradbury Collection, uh, Ray Bradbury Theater. This was a TV show for HBO, I believe. Um, really good anthology series. Uh, you can't go wrong with Ray Bradbury. He's one of my favorite writers. Um, 
another public domain set, The Legendary West. Um, I've watched a good chunk of these, but um, Death Rides a Horse is a really fun one with Lee Van Cleef. The Grand Duel is another one with Lee Van Cleef. This was a really nice surprise, and this is one of the films that uh, started my um, philosophy that if an Italian movie has Lee Van Cleef in it, it's probably going to be good. His name was King, has uh, Klaus Kinski in it. This uh, soundtrack was repurposed by Quentin Tarantino. Um, Kiyomo, uh, Kiyoma and Grand Duel are both on um, Blu-ray. I need to upgrade both of these, but especially the Grand Duel. Uh, Kiyoma has um, Woody Strode, who was a staple of Westerns, uh, dating back all the way to The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Um, and then Franco Nero, who was uh, the original Django. Uh, and then the One-Eyed Jacks. This is another one that I need to upgrade. Uh, Criterion released it. This is Marlon Brando's sole directorial feature. Um, I really like Brando from this era. And it's a shame that, you know, shortly after this, he started getting bitter and uh, disenfranchised and um, just stopped giving great performances or uh, and when he did he was usually a tremendous pain in the ass um, although sometimes it improved it in the case of Apocalypse Now I think um, his decisions were ultimately for the better of the film but uh, usually he was just a pain in the ass um, if you want, really want to get to know Marlon Brando late in his career watch that documentary um, Lost Soul the uh, doomed journey of uh, Richard Stanley's Island of Dr. Moreau but uh, one on Jacks, released by Criterion. It's a, it's a really cool movie, and this is another one I need to upgrade. But um, on to my last one, Taboo Tales. Um, I haven't watched all of these, but um, this is a collection of like uh, juvenile delinquent and uh, moral films of the 30s and 40s, um, Reefer Madness stuff like that. Um, they're kind of fun. Uh, they're really on the nose and um, kind of hilarious, unintentionally hilarious. Uh, there's one that stands out in here. The Terror of Tiny Town is a film uh, with an entire cast of uh, little people actors. Uh, it's a western, and there are little Shetland ponies in it, and uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It kind of reminds me of that Werner Herzog movie, Even Dwarf Started Small. But... Um, now oh, my battery is failing, so good good time to stop. But um, anyway, I'll be on later today to show you guys some monster movies. So have a good one and stay safe.